here's where the author Starhawk, uh, now this is going to a really big scale here, where people are already thinking about this stuff on a, on a big, big level. Here's where the fifth sacred thing, the movie The Fifth Sacred Thing becomes, the book rather, becomes a movie. And these are storyboards um, that City Repair prepared for Starhawk in, in the process of developing the scenario of the movie, the production. So if you've read that book, you already know that this, is a, this, is, this situation is where humanity survives peak oil and the streets become available again for pathways and gardens and gathering places and, 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 and marketplace activity. The sides of buildings are retrofitted with trellises that support fruit bearing vines in order to cool buildings and all horizontal spaces on rooftops become available for gardens as well and then these little fanciful wind turbines that are floating up in the sky generating electricity and then large scale gathering places that before were just for sports teams become available for community gatherings and events. Okay, so that's all about sort of big stuff, big vision, local, you know, affects the global, affects the national and the global, city by city, we change, we take back our world. Personally though, I think it's very, very important to know what your own edge is and remain in touch with the things that, that uh, keep you growing and connected. This is a project I got to do with um, a woman named Nala Walla. Hopefully you'll, you'll get to work with her someday. She's a zone zero body ecologist. Nala Walla, look her up. She's part of the Bee Collective from Port Townsend. She and I went back to Massachusetts last summer to do this um, very, very edge pushing experience, a teaching process in which we were going to throw out the whole idea that time and space is money um, and for a week work with contact improv dancers. This was at Earth Dance, the mecca of contact improv. So all these dancers that weren't really familiar with tools, but were familiar with working with their bodies. And the idea was to build habitat through joy, storytelling, movement, touching, synchronized, spontaneous um, action, to go out into the forest and, and move slowly, feel your body, feel yourself breathing, hear, feel the wind on our skin, and then sometimes in, in synchronous ways to actually pick up branches all at the same time and then move through the forest carrying them back. Sometimes very large pieces of wood. And after a week, after familiarizing these dancers with some basic principles of construction, like creating triangulation, this is what, we, this is what emerged. And it's a womb space. Of course, every great womb space has to have a proper entrance with a... Uh, little chime at the top there. <laughs> and as you, uh, and everybody's head strikes this as they come out of the womb. Um, so looking up in the space is this octagonal roof and this prismatic sort of oculus.